nowhere you won't go Nothing you won't do No place that I could hide You were always in pursuit I'm never too far gone Always in your side When I wait for you You're always right on time You're always pursuing Always pursuing Always pursuing me More than the air I breathe I need you here with me And you're never gonna stop Never gonna stop And you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop chasing me You made a way for me Opened up the door Jesus, you have my heart Now and forevermore You're always pursuing
darkness into your light My heart surrenders to your design You gave me purpose, so I give my life I'm giving you all of me video down the hall. Can we leave these costumes in here for a second? Sure, no problem. We thought we'd leave them with the kids, but we figured they wouldn't be able to resist trying them on. <laughs> Those kids. Be back in a second. All right. Yep. You called it. Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name's Harper. And this is the time we learned how to fight evil. Hey, Jake. Is something wrong? My Bible reading today, it was really weird. How so? I was in the book of Ephesians, and it started talking about the devil's schemes and the powers of this dark world and the spiritual forces of evil. I got so freaked out, I stopped reading. I know the passage you're talking about. I have trouble with it, too. It's kind of scary. What are we supposed to do? I don't think I can sleep knowing there are evil forces out there somewhere. We can talk to Alyssa or Tony. Maybe they can point us in the right direction. Or... Or... Maybe we could help. How? We'd have to set a few things up. Iron out a few kinks. But... But... If you give us a few minutes, I'm sure we could put all of your fears to rest. Sure. Excellent. We'll be right back. Should we be worried? Maybe just a little. Everything's going to be okay, Jake. What was that? Uh, I don't know. In a world once saved by loyal friends, a new threat emerges. Huh? Two heroes. 
Ghosts must reunite and scale a dark tower to vanquish the forces of evil! You don't think. It's time for... The Mountains of Wiltshire! Part 2! <sighs> really? You guys made a sequel? Oh, you bet we did. We've been working on a little something for the game. We uh, heard you talking and we thought this would be the perfect time to try it out. How's it gonna work this time? You follow me, I'll take you to your first challenge while Rodney sets up what comes next. Begin! Begin! Okay, Vanessa, so where are we at? First, I must dramatically set the stage for you. The Bible tells us there is a real spiritual war going on right now between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of evil. Right. And here in the Tower of Wiltshire, the invisible war is made visible. We can see the enemies we face. Uh, that sounds super scary. I know, this isn't making me feel any better. <laughs> it is I, the evil Mikester. <laughs> you at least could pretend to be a little scared or something. I mean, we're trying, but come on. You're just not that scary, Mike. That's fair. You know that feeling you're feeling right now? How something really wants to scare you? Ah. But you're just not that afraid, correct? That's the feeling you can take with you into the spiritual war. Because no matter how scary it may seem, spoiler alert, God's already won the war. God wins, evil loses. God, God wins, wins, evil loses. Wait, 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 hold up. He's saying there's no way I can win. I've already lost, like I automatically lose? Yep. God's the ruler over everything. So even though the kingdom of evil wants to steal, kill, and destroy God's kingdom, it will never win. That was so much easier than I thought. For sure. Very good. I'm glad to see you overcame the first floor's challenge. It wasn't that difficult. Evil had already lost. That's good to hear. When we follow Jesus, we don't have to worry about the spiritual war going on around us, but it is important to know what the enemy's attacks can look like. Whoa, whoa. No one said anything about attacks. The forces of evil can attack us? You better believe we can. Ha! Dot, you are much better at playing scary than Mike was. The evil forces can attack you in different ways. This one attacks you by lying about you. When bad things happen, it's all your fault. You should just give up trying to do the right thing because it doesn't make a difference anyway. You're going to fail. You've messed up before and you'll mess up again. I don't like this at all. What are we supposed to do? You have to fight back. Choose what weapon you will use. Uh, I'll attack the enemy with this sword and I'll use these nunchucks. <laughs> Unfortunately, those attacks are ineffective. These kinds of weapons don't work in a spiritual war. Well, what does? Well, you... No, I... Sorry, I had a thought, but I'm drawing a blank. Here, watch this. Yeah. This is the story in the Bible, we find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. This book is alive, full of answers and godly advice. This book is alive. See the wonderful stories inside. Every day I'm searching, read through history. Is alive. Timmy, what are you doing? You're supposed to be dressed as a prince. I decided that dressing up in God's armor was way cooler. You're not dressed in God's armor. Yes, I am. Check the facts right here in the book of Ephesians. The Bible told me to put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in a time of evil. 
Well, it also says here that you should be wearing the belt of truth because God's truth sets you free from the lies of the enemy. Are you calling my belt a liar? No, but I do think you might be in the wrong outfit. To be honest, I didn't read past the first verse. What else does Ephesians say? Let's see. Ephesians 6.15 says to wear the breastplate of righteousness. Yes, I've got that right here. That's just a normal breastplate. The one you need helps us choose what is right and protects your heart from sin. Mine's no good then. Keep reading. All right. Next up, we have the shoes of the gospel of peace. They help you not to fear or worry about the things going on around you and share God's peace with others. Well, well, well. Would you look at this? No peace in these kicks. <laughs> it smells like fear in there to me. What about my shield? It has to be right. Can it strengthen you to believe only in God like the shield of faith from Ephesians? Probably. And can it stand up to the lies and bad thoughts the enemy might shoot at it? That depends. Can plastic defend me against evil? I don't think so. Oh man, I'm in big trouble. You might as well tell me the rest. All we have left to check off are the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. The helmet of salvo what? I said the helmet of salvation. It means this helmet can protect your mind and help you to only think about God. Oh, I get it. So, what about the sword? Is it a super awesome, dangerous sword? Here's your sword. No, silly goose. This is a B-I-B-L-E, Bible. I wanted a sword. Well, the sword of the Spirit is actually God's word. When you speak the words of the Bible, it can cut the lies of the enemy like a sword. I don't think I'm gonna have enough allowance money to spend on all these fancy Jesus clothes. These aren't physical pieces of armor, Timmy. If you pray, read the Bible, and have Jesus in your heart, you will always be dressed in God's armor. So I'm not fighting in an actual battle? Oh, it's real, all right. But we can't see the spiritual war going on right now. But we can protect our hearts and minds from fear or doubt with the armor of God. Wow, thanks for all your help. I'm ready for battle now. So you see, to defeat a spiritual enemy, you need a spiritual weapon, which is why it's good to have the armor of God on your side. You can call on the name of Jesus and pray in the power of the Holy Spirit for yourself or someone else. You can also speak the truth from God's word to fight the lies. Exactly. Hey, wait, you're still supposed to be evil. Oh, right. <clears throat> Too bad you're not very good at praying. That's, that's not very nice. Jesus, please help us to not listen to the lies the enemy is trying to say about us. Help us believe what you say in the Bible, that you love us and you'll always be with us. Good job. Ah! Aw, oh, man, I liked playing Scary Dot. You've successfully overcome your second challenge. Are you ready to ascend to the third floor via the ancient golden elevator? And by that, you mean? The lounge. Vanessa's gonna meet you up there. Let's go. It looks pretty normal in here. Yeah, except for Tony. You two have done well to overcome the lies the enemy might say about you. But there are other attacks the enemy can use, like lies about God. Uh, I'm sure God has our backs no matter what attacks come our way. No, he doesn't. Of course he does. He's a good God. He loves us. No, he's not. He's not good. He doesn't actually love you. He doesn't really care about anybody. As a matter of fact, he may not even be real. If he was real, wouldn't he stop all the bad things from happening to you? Think about that for a second. No, that's not how it works. God is good, no matter what Scary Tony says. I'm sure of it. You're right. We can't listen to him. In fact, I think I know a verse that might help us. It's from the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verse 4. Do you want me to teach it to you? Sure. 1 John 4, 4. 1 John 4, 4. The Spirit who lives in you. The Spirit who lives in you. Is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. God is always with us, and he is so much stronger than any evil or bad thing that we might face in life. 
Okay. Jesus, when the enemy tries to lie to us about who you are, will you help us remember that you're good and loving and more powerful than they'll ever be? Amazing work, you two. Can I uh, finish my coffee before I topple over dramatically? Sure. You have finished the third challenge. Only one level remains. Are you ready to ascend to the uppermost heights of the Tower of Wiltshire? We're ready. Okay, I'm done. Uh... Are you ready for your final challenge? Everything you've experienced thus far has prepared you for this moment. What happens now? Not so fast! We're not gonna make it that easy. Not by a long shot. They're coming after us. We can hold them off, but that means we can't help you with your final challenge. It's all up to you. Okay. We're ready. Charge! So, you finally arrived. Alyssa's the big bad. Yeah, Rodney and Vanessa felt bad for leaving me out of their first game, so they gave me a really good part. <laughs> and now you've wandered into my trap. What trap? Vanessa and Rodney only thought they prepared you well for the final challenge, but they did not. You're still not prepared. You're not as strong as me, and you'll never be as strong as me. The forces of evil will never be overcome by two kids. I will! We don't have to overcome you. That's not our job. God's already won this war. God wins, evil loses. Wait. <laughs> Jesus, anytime we have to fight against our spiritual enemy, help us remember, you've already won this war. And then, give us the courage to live like you. Oh man, guys. I had this whole like epic evil speech prepared. You didn't even let me finish. You mean we won? <laughs> you won! You, you won! won! <laughs> Great job. I'm Harper, and I'm part of Connect HQ. I have a great verse I'd like to share with you. Say it with me like this. 1 John 4, 4. The spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. God is always with us, and He is so much stronger than any evil thing we might face in our life. God gives us the armor of God to protect us from spiritual attacks. Anytime you're worried or afraid, you can call on Jesus, pray in the power of the Holy Spirit, and remember the truth from the Bible. God is looking after you and keeping your spirit safe. It's important to know what the enemy's attacks can look like. They might try things like lying to you about who you are or who God is, making bad things happen, or confusing you. If you feel like you're being attacked, remember to pray and focus on God's truth. Most of all, remember this. God wins, evil loses. There's nothing the enemy can do to change that. God has already won this war, and we can find rest and peace in Him because of that. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Hey guys. How are you guys feeling? Is the spiritual war still feeling scary? Not at all. The Mountains of Vulture Part 2 was just what we needed. Thanks so much for putting it together. Of course. Yeah, we had an awesome time setting it all up. Is there gonna be a Part 3? But there has to be a Part 3. I mean, who just stops with Part 2? It might be a while. But we are cooking up a little something. Okay, more ideas for the Mountains of Wiltshire Part 3. Go. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. A pirate ship, but it's flying in the sky. Hmm, okay, I'm feeling you. But I'll see your pirate ship and I'll raise you dogs. It's in a mall. Everybody lives in the mall. Pizza, water balloons, blow horns, back to puppies. We need more dice. The spiritual war can be scary, but as long as we have God on our side, we don't have to be afraid. Do you want the peace of knowing that God's with you no matter what? If so, you can make that choice by following Jesus. All you have to remember are the ABCs. A. Admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying Him. B. Believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. 
Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C. Choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live in love like Jesus, tell others God is your leader and number one friend. Did you make that choice today? If so, be sure to talk about it with a parent or leader you trust.